In this video, we are going to go over how to define your own functions from within Mathematica, and we're also going to talk a little bit about how to use the derivative function, which is built into Mathematica. So, if you'll remember from our first video, there are two things that we have to remember syntactically about Mathematica. The first is that Mathematica really likes capital letters when you're using the predefined commands. The second is that when you're passing parameters to a function, when it exists in Mathematica, uh, you pass it within square brackets. So you remember that Mathematica uses parentheses to group things, but it uses square brackets when you're passing variables or just passing information to function calls. And those things are the things we need to remember. Now, mm -hmm. when you're defining a function in Mathematica, you're free to call it whatever you'd like. And so you're able to either follow the same convention that Mathematica does using that camel case notation, or you can do whatever you'd like. So following the camel case and using capital letters is not important when you're defining your own function. I find it easier to follow that structure so that everything is consistent when I'm working within Mathematica, but you're not, your hands are not tied in that matter. The thing that you are tied to is using that square brackets for passing different parameters to your function. So the first thing that you have to do to define a function in Mathematica is name your function. Now it's very common mathematically if you're working with something out of a book to just call a function f and you're at liberty to do that. So you begin by picking your name for your function. You can call it f if you'd like, you could call it puppy if you want keeping it lowercase if you'd like, or you could do something capital, like unicorn. Either way, you pick the name for your function, and suppose that the unicorn function is a function of a variable x. So unicorn is the name of my function, the command that I want to define for Mathematica, and I want it to take in a variable. Because it's Mathematica, what I do have to follow is I have to follow the square bracket convention. So the unicorn function takes in a variable x. And in order to tell Mathematica that x is going to be a variable, I need to put an underscore after it. So notice how that's changed the color again. The name of my function, which is unicorn, has stayed in blue. And because I've put this underscore after the x, it now knows that this x is something different than part of the name of the function. So this part of the function definition is telling Mathematica how I will be calling the function in the future with the word unicorn, and what needs to be passed to it in order for the function to be called correctly. I need to pass it one thing, and that thing is going to be represented by x when I now define the function. Now if you think about the way that math people use an equal sign, we use equal signs mathematically in two different ways. We use them once to say things like let x equal 5 when we're making a definition, but we also use equal signs to test if two values are really the same. Mathematica is a computer program, and so it's not really smart enough to distinguish between those two contextual equals, so Mathematica actually uses different commands for this. So if you want to check whether or not two quantities are equal within Mathematica, you use two equal signs. And if you're making a definition like let x equal 5, then you, instead of just using a single equal sign, you use a colon equal sign. That's the one that we want right here. We're defining a function, unicorn of x, and so we're saying like x equals 5, we need to define equal. Again, notice how that's changed the color. Now this x is that green color that we've seen before um, that variables turn in Mathematica as soon as Mathematica registers that they're really variables. This is the entire syntax that we need for defining a function, unicorn of x, defined to equal, and now it should be equal to whatever we want it to be. So unicorn of x could be something as simple as x squared, and when I'm done defining the function, I hit shift enter, and now I've made my function definition. I could say what is unicorn of 5, and then it'll spit out 25 for me. So it's a silly thing to do, but it just goes to show that you can really name your functions anything you'd like in Mathematica as long as it doesn't conflict with something that's already defined in Mathematica's library. So I couldn't define my own plot function since Mathematica has a plot function. That would be a conflict, but I'm pretty certain that Mathematica has no unicorn function, so I'm safe in calling my function that. For a more realistic example here, 
let's take a look and suppose that we were working on a calculus problem. So we're going along doing our homework and we come across this problem where we're considering this function right here. Problem 19, y is 2 cosine theta plus 5 sine theta all raised to the ninth power. And we want to do something with that. So let's go back to Mathematica and let's teach Mathematica about that function. Let's call it f. Let's call it something a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to define a function f of a variable. The problem in the book used theta, but there's no problem with calling it x here or anything we'd like for that matter. And let's define it to be equal to that function. So what was the function? It was, let's take a look again, 2 cosine theta plus 5 sine theta all raised to the ninth power. Okay. Let's go back to Mathematica. Let's make it look like it does in the textbook by using our basic math palette. So what I had was some sort of thing in parentheses raised to the ninth power. So let's, I have something raised to a power, so I'm going to hit this button here. And it's inside parentheses. Let's start entering what was there. There were parentheses. I like to open them and close them all at once. And then I had a sine function. I had 2 times the sine of my variable x. I'm looking over here and I don't see anything about sines and cosines. And I could try to guess that in fact capital S-I-N is the sine function in Mathematica and you'd guess correctly. But if you didn't know that, you could just come over here to your math assistant and hit advanced and now it's got your basic trig functions along the top and also inverse trig functions and some other things. So I could say, okay, it was 2 times the sine of x. And then I added on to that 5 times the cosine of x. And all of that was being raised up here to the ninth power. And that was my function f of x. Shift enter. That was my function f of x. I could ask it all sorts of things like what's the value of f of? Maybe I want to know what f of pi is. So we could come back. We could try to guess the command for pi, or again, it's over here under basic of pi. Let's check mathematically gives us the right answer. The sine of pi is going to give us 0. And the cosine of pi is going to give us negative 1. So this should be negative 5 to the ninth power. So mathematical will just spit out a number for us. It's going to be huge. Let's double check. Negative 5 to the ninth power. And it ends up being the same. So Mathematica has got that function and is giving us correct answers here. OK. But maybe what I'm really interested in, since this is a calculus class, is taking the derivative of the function f. And that would involve some chain rule, and we just want to check our work to see if we're right. Strangely enough, you might think the command for derivatives in Mathematica would be the word derivative, but it's something easier than that. Derivatives are so common in Mathematica that it's just literally the letter D. And let's ask Mathematica for help to see what we need for that command. So it spits out what we want to hear. The first thing it tells us is that the D command actually gives partial derivatives. This is for if you're going on to multivariable calculus later on. Mathematica does partial derivatives. But basically, if we only wanted to do a derivative of our single-valued function, we type in D, and it takes in two parameters. D for derivative, it needs to know what the function is, and it needs to know what the variable is, just like when we're plotting. So let's check. Let's have our function, Mathematica, take the derivative of f of x here. I type in d. I need square brackets. The function I want it to take the derivative of is f of x, and my variable is x. So I ask Mathematica for the derivative, and it shows us what we would like to see from a chain rule. We brought down the 9 in front, then we have this same quantity we've had before, 2 sine x plus 5 cosine x raised to the 8th, decrement the power. But by the chain rule, I'd have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, giving this other piece right here. So that's taking derivatives in Mathematica. Two other cool things that we could do, just for a little bit of practice before we end the video. First, we can take iterated derivatives. Notice that that's actually the second option up here. If instead of putting just an x in this second spot right here, if I used braces and then did an x comma n, it'll give a multiple derivative. So let's say I wanted the second derivative of that function f, I'd put take the derivative of f of x, 
And instead of just putting an x here, I would start and end my braces and say x is my variable and I actually want to take two derivatives. Now if I hit enter, I get something that I haven't checked but looks reasonably like it could be the second derivative of that function. It's got the right pieces. You can tell some sort of product rule was used. You've got an eighth power and a seventh power, which seems right. Um, this is actually the second derivative of that function, f up there. The other thing that you could do is maybe you're interested in, maybe you're doing some sort of tangent problem and you defined your function f of x up here, but you also want to do something and use the values of the derivative of the function over and over. You can combine the two things that we've done today, and you can define functions in terms of both your own defined commands in Mathematica and Mathematica's commands like d. So let's say I wanted this function and I wanted to be able to play with it later to evaluate it at spots like pi uh, if I were doing a tangent line problem then maybe I could define a function. I, it needs a new letter, so Mathematica knows that it's different. So let's use g. We haven't used that yet. g of x is a new function. And what do I want it to be? Well, I want it to be the derivative of the function f of x when evaluated at x. I hit enter, and then I say, Mathematica, what's g of x? And it tells me that same function that we saw before. So you can combine these two things to now store this particular function as special to you somehow um, by defining your own function and defining it in terms of both built-in functions to Mathematica like derivative and then your own defined functions like f. Now as a check your understanding, let me put the exercise in here that you may want to do. Let's look at a different problem from that textbook. See if you can come up with a name, any old name that you want for a function and define into Mathematica a different problem from here. Let's do 20 instead, the square root of 9 plus x plus the sine of x. 